the next topic uh, wherein fall hazard is, uh, is, is very high okay, that topic is primarily demolition. So, demolition also works in the same way like construction, so, but in the reverse process. The only difference between actual construction and demolition is, demolition is exactly in the reverse like a construction in terms of the sequence of operations, but demolition has the same hazard as with the original construction and also demolition has additional hazards also in apart from construction that should be uh, know, understood. Now, what is demolition? Now, we will start discussing about demolition and the hazards here. Demolition is uh, the dismantling, destroying or wrecking of any building or structure or any part. The reasons can be any aged structure that has lost its equilibrium then you and it shows early signs of collapse then it has to be demolished or a structure is partially collapsed due to any disaster or acts of God then it can be it has to be demolished or maybe for want of space which is the last reason a structure may sometimes be demolished sometimes a wrong uh, foundation design or failure in excessive settlement of the foundation and a structure is not suitable for uh, its life cycle then a structure has to be demolished ok overloading of structure excessive corrosion other issues which makes the structure unserviceable for all these reasons a structure has to be demolished now how do you start with the demolition? So, safe planning on the demolition work. So, whenever you want to start the demolishing demolition work, it is not that you go to the site and then start you know, collapsing the whole structure. It is not done in that way. First, the area has to be studied. Okay? The adjacent structure all in and around the building which has to be collapsed has to be first analyzed. Okay? So, when you talk about the adjoining structure, so, before the starting with the actual demolition, so all the adjoining structure has to be first seen their foundations, their stability and how far this structure to be demolished is in line with the other structure, everything has to be analyzed and uh, then th because the method of uh, uh, demolition also should not be <coughs> affecting the adjacent structures. So, all those should be first cross checked. Okay, and all and also suppose if there is a hospital close by and so on, then the nuisance effect of the demolition also should not be affecting the neighboring structure and all these should be kept as low as possible. So, these all should be kept in mind. So, the adjacent structure and the area around the structure to be demolished first has to be thoroughly studied. Then the actual structure to be demolished also has to be thoroughly studied. Why? Because there can be hazardous substances inside the structure or the, the structure can be partially collapsed. So, the stability of the structure, the way with which the structure is uh, in, in place and uh, so all these has to be first thoroughly analyzed because the, the method of demolition all depends on the actual structure. So, in definite plan of procedure for the demolition work depending on the manner in which the loads of the structural parts are supported all has to be studied. To assess the possibility of an unplanned collapse of any portion of the structure when the demolition happens all should be ascertained ok. And wherever possible if there is a if there is a side wall of any adjoining structure then you should be thinking of the way to remove the member. So, all these should be thought of and permanent protection is really provided when in case of uh, in case of an unexpected collapse. In case any danger is anticipated to the adjoining structure, then you have to vacate the structure in order to you know protect the, the life of the people who are occupying inside. And you also you have to determine the types of hazardous chemicals, any gases, explosives or flammable materials inside the structure before you think of demolition. So, those all has to be assessed first. Safe precautions before the demolition work and as usual danger signs should be conspicuously posted all around the structure. The area should be barricaded and no entry of children public should happen and also any worker except the actual uh, worker required for demolition work should be allowed inside the area inside the barricaded area and provisions should be made for at least two independent exits even though you are fully barricading the, the area 
at least two independent exits should be there in case of an emergency for the workmen to leave the particular area. And even in the nights, there should be red lights placed on all the barricades and on the structure to know that there is a demolition which has happened. Sometimes uh, you, you collapse a structure and after you no know, some time there can be partial collapse continuing to happen. So, you, the area has to be warned off to the public that the demolition has happened and there can be some unexpected evenings which may happen. No unauthorized person shall enter the site of demolition outside the office hours and even authorized people are not supposed to you know, go at un unnecessarily into the site. There should be watchmen posted at all exit points to prevent the entry of public and other unauthorized people. PPE should be supplied to all workers and their use also should be enforced and they should know when to use what PPE and everything should be uh, known to the workers very clearly based on the uh, type of demolition and based on the structure with which they are going to demolish it should be known to them. Now before you start with the demolition again some technical issues what you have to do is number one is service lines electrical wires, telephone lines, water pipes, gas etc which is actually entering into the particular uh, structure which is to be demolished it should be switched off or relocated or rerouted and when the actual demolition is in process so that unnecessary catastrophes should happen in while the demolition is going on. And prior to altering or cutting off these lines the necessary approval should be obtained from the concerned authority and then this should happen. If a structure to be demolished has been partially collapsed as a result of fire or explosion or other natural disasters, then the walls or damaged roofs should be properly showed or braced suitably, especially when you are going for a manual means of demolition. And the walkways and passageways should be provided for use of workmen who should also be instructed how to use the walkways and passageways. And these walkways and passageways should be well, well lit, okay, there should be proper illumination, they should be inspected and they should always be free from debris for the quick movement of material and on workers. All nails in any form of lumber should be withdrawn, hammered and they should be, be and they should be removed from the site if there are loose planks and something and they should be placed or piled up for further cleaning and burning. Okay. The, again some more safe precautions if there are glazed doors and windows or any sashes so they should be first removed because all these fragile and loose fixtures uh, they may be very great hazard especially when you are doing the demolition they can be a great hazard to the even to the public. Okay. And loose plasters also should be stripped off throughout the entire building so that you can actually reduce the, the quantity of dust which starts coming out as a result of demolition. So, advantageous to remove the glasses and plastering is to have glass breakage and other hazards, safety hazards and also to eliminate lot of dust which comes as a result of demolition. So, all floor openings and shafts which are not used for material chutes should be enclosed with guardrails and tow boards as mentioned in the earlier class on what is guardrails. Public uh, workers protection. So, uh, wherever possible the public should be avoided from into the site and workers should have a proper way of entry into the structure and exit. So, accordingly there should be a side walk shed which should be constructed. So, if the structure to be demolished is more than 2 stories or 7.5 meters high then the adjacent road should be closed and the sidewalk should be constructed. So, there are clear dimensions given on how the sidewalk sheds should be okay, as given in OSHA and IS codes. So, the sidewalk shed should be at least having a minimum clearance of 2.4 meters um, for the height of, uh, of the sidewalk shed and the tow board should be at least 1 meter high above the roof of the shed as shown here. Okay. And uh, the tow board should be actually phasing outward or it can be vertical and the when it is phasing outward should not be more than 45 degrees in order to catch the debris which falls onto the sidewalk shed. The roof of the sidewalk shed uh, should be very strong and capable of sustaining a load of at least 73 Newton per mm square 
and the roof should be designed taking into account impact of falling debris okay that also should be taken care so this is your particular roof okay the decking of the support it should be having closed panels of not less than 50 mm thickness and they should also be watertight okay in order to have no leaking into the sidewalk sheds whenever there is debris falling onto the sidewalk shed frequently the load has to be removed so that the maximum permissible limit on the load above the sidewalk shed is maintained so these are all some of the tips uh, on the sidewalk sheds sometimes the sidewalk shed may be little far away from the site to enter the actual site to be demolished then accordingly a canopy structure can be installed to connect the sidewalk shed and your actual structure to be demolished so the canopy should be at least 8 feet or 2 and a half meters in width and it should be at least 2 feet wider than the entrance with which wherein the workers has to enter so that whatever falling debris are not falling onto the workers and the workers are really safe for entering the structure to be demolished okay so actual demolition operations and as i said uh, a more number of precautions should be taken especially in terms of safety for a demolition work as against a regular construction because a demolition operation also has the same hazard as equal to a normal construction work and the only difference i said is the demolition generally happens in the reverse form as construction in construction you go from foundation then walls column floors and so on but in demolition you go from top floor to floor by floor down and then you go to the ground floor and then the basement so the demolition uh, shall always proceed systematically story by story from top floor to the bottom floor and basement and the demolition work should be proceeded in such a way that it causes least damage and nuisance to the adjoining building and members of the public and also it should satisfy all safety requirements to avoid any accidents now there are three types of demolition which you should know number one is manual means mechanical demolition and the third one is induced collapse um, and again the all three have extremely opposite uh, characteristics for example manual means is very slow in order to bring down a building okay because you, you you use actually a concrete breaker or a pneumatic breaker driller for drilling and then breaking the whole structure it is a very slow process but in terms of hazard levels it is not too much hazardous in terms of dust pollution and so on so in that form a manual means is a good way of demolition it is still applicable for smaller projects pneumatic drillers concrete breakers are generally used for breaking down a structure the next extreme case is induced collapse wherein you put explosives and through blasting you bring down the building in no second but if you see the noise the dust pollution and so on it is too high in case of an induced collapse then this method is generally used for high rise structures or where a structure is you no know, creating lot of warning signals on you no know, failure or sudden collapse it is better to use explosives and bring down the structure in no second using a detonator the feasible option among these two extreme cases is mechanical demolition and as the name implies there is a crane which has a ball steel ball and which starts move, moving and uh, forcing onto the wall and onto the building and as a result the building starts collapsing so this is not that slow like a manual means nor very quick like a induced collapse but it takes moderate time for the demolition to happen okay it is most widely used and it uses tools for crushing concrete and also for shearing steel if you have an rcc structure also so mechanical demolition is the most commonly used and we will discuss about safety precautions in mechanical demolition and as shown in the picture there is a crane with a swivel uh, swing motion or with a steel ball and with that it acts onto the building and the building starts to collapse safety precautions no workers shall be permitted in any area when using a crane's headache ball or your clamshell is used for pricking out all your debris so no worker is allowed to enter that premises and workers necessary to perform work only they will be permitted to work in that particular area 
and the area is supposed to be completely barricaded to a minimum distance of 1.5 times the height of the wall. Accordingly, the area has to be barricaded because this may have falling debris on, uh, on quite a you know, wide area. Mechanical device should be so located that the falling debris is not actually falling onto the equipment and equipment is giving a failure. The equipment shall not also cause any damage to either power lines, overhead lines or any lines which are above and also to the adjacent structures which are close by. And the workers engaged in the demolition job should always stand on a firm base and the free ends of cut members can also be used as a work platform, but they must be properly showed and in fastened when the workers are using it as a base to stand. The ball must be attached to the load line with a swivel type connection only so that it is not actually twisted when, when in action. Okay? The ball should go very freely um, onto the wall and coming back and onto the wall. So, it should be a swivel type connection so that it is not twisting and turning off. During demolition, continu continuous inspections by a competent person should be made onto the structure whether the weakened portions are still stable or not and what about the collapse of the whole structure. So, that should be ensured and so on. Now, the demolition ball should not exceed 50 percent of the cranes rated load and also it is based on the boom length and the angle of operation. Okay? They should not be exceeding 25 percent of the line strength and also this um, a boom and load line should be operating as close as possible and also you should keep in mind the falling debris is not affecting the crane and the equipment. Now, removal of materials or chutes. Uh, there are so many ways to remove the debris, okay? that is what is a term we generally use on the broken pieces of a structure. This debris can be removed from the structure through two means, the two common means are one is chute and the other one is your floor or roof openings. Okay? Chutes if provided has to be at an angle of not of more than 45 degrees, this is a building. Okay? This is a load from where you are actually going to put and this is your floor opening. Okay. So, this angle is what I am talking about. Okay. This is a place for collecting all your debris. Okay. So, if a, if a structure is, um, if a chute is having more than 45 degrees, if this is more than 45 degrees, what happens is the slope is very steep okay? and as such it should be closed on all uh, on the upper side also on all four sides preferably. In this case, it is a vertical chute okay? that is why it is fully closed. Okay? It is fully closed and the area is also put with a debris net so that you know, there is no uh, fall hazard outside the particular area, it is barricaded completely. And uh, if the chute is at an angle of less than 45 degrees, then primarily it is close to horizontal. So, it can come with a slow speed. In that case, you can have an upper side open chute also. Okay? That is also possible. Suppose, if you are having a, a, a very steep slope in the sense more than 45 degrees, then what happens is the debris can come at a very dangerous speed. Okay? And if you are having a broken chute with broken lines, maybe for example, if you see this picture, this picture I brought to show the chute connections only. Okay? These are the different chutes here. Okay? If the lines are broken, what happens is it may also try to damage the chute itself. Okay? So, the chute should be such a way arranged that it is having a continuous line, but if you start giving a continuous line, then it can come with a very dangerous speed. At points okay there should be a stops given for the uh, for the to control the movement of debris and to fall on to the uh, collector place okay in this case this is a collector place this is a place uh, wherein the first time no debris is there and the debris is collected here and then removed frequently so that there should be a gate or a stop should be provided at certain places and before the closing of the bottom also in order to control the movement of debris coming out okay? and then it should be removed from the chute and collected accordingly. Opening for the chutes shall not exceed 1.2 meters in height 
for example this is the lay this is the level at which the chute is there and this is the floor level so this height should not be more than 1.2 meters okay and along the wall of the chute and the openings in the lower floors below should be kept closed when not in use okay this is not a regular uh, demolition work so it is open but generally it is generally closed when it is not in use and every time it has to be dumped an opening into which the workmen dump the debris debris okay which is this opening so this is a primarily a parapet opening so this opening should have a proper guardrail so that the workmen are not having a fall hazard whenever this particular opening is open and debris are coming in all other openings should be accordingly closed on to the levels below okay then removal of materials through floor opening and as i said sometimes most often uh, the material the demolition material are generally collected into the building only they are not collected and stored outside of the building so there can be floor openings into which the material can be dumped onto the lower floor by throwing in into the lower floor okay but there are some safety precautions for throwing in of the material into the floor openings and collecting it onto the ground floor the total area of the hole cut okay sometimes it can be a natural cut sometimes it can be cut specifically for throwing in and collecting all the debris so this area whatever it's cut for throwing in the material it should not be more than 25% of this complete wall area okay that should be the number one safety precaution because the slab will lose its strength and as such it may start getting failed so all the floors above should be accordingly cut when you are actually you no know, trying to throw in the material from in the in terms of uh, floor or roof openings it should be ensured storage floor is adequate uh, adequately strong enough so this is the storage floor it's adequately strong enough to withstand the falling material because it comes with a very great impact load on to the floor the openings in all the floors below the floor so this is the floor from where you are throwing the debris all the floors below should also be properly barricaded okay so there should be barricades left with the proper danger signs written saying that uh, hazard falling debris okay so that people are warned of the falling debris and there should be a proper guard rail also at all the floors below and also on to the collector point openings in all the floors below the floor from which the materials are being removed should be protected by standard rails barricades and guard rails no barricades or guard rails should be removed until the story immediately below the floor has been demolished down to the floor line so unless this floor is completely demolished this barricade should not be removed okay it should be there in place only and all the debris are cleared off from the particular floor when the cutting of a floor when you are cutting a floor uh, primarily in order to create a opening for throwing in the debris and if the planks are 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 not sufficiently strong enough to support then accordingly bracing and shoring has to be done in order to make the floor strong enough in order to do the cut portion signs or warning of the falling hazards should be posted at all levels okay every level should have a sign of falling debris demolition of walls again there are a lot of safety precautions given on each component of the structure to be demolished but walls are very critical so we will discuss about walls um walls are not allowed to fall as a single mass okay in the sense uh, if you see here uh, the workers are trying to push the wall at a very great speed and make it to fall as a single mass what happens is most of the load coming on to the structure is partially on to the walls and if the walls are collapsed the structure may automatically collapse and fall hazard of the workers may normally take place and the walls should be removed only part by part so staging should be provided for the men to work on if the walls are very thin okay and dangerous to work by standing over them then there should be an other staging and the workers can stand over there and start removing the uh, walls the temporary structure should be also be used to support your uh, centering or shuttering and there should be adequate precautions for maintaining the structure and clearing of your walls no section of your wall 
whose height is more than 15 times of the thickness shall be permitted to stand without a lateral bracing okay you have to safeguard the other sides of the wall and then only start demolishing a wall as seen in this picture if you when the workers are trying to collapse this particular wall a portion of the particular wall and this wall starts automatically to collapse okay and accordingly lateral bracing has to be there unless the um, unless the wall height is more than 15 times the thickness of the wall, it should not be allowed to stand on its own. Structural or load supporting members on any floor shall not be cut or removed until all the stories above that floor has been demolished or removed. A simple thumb rule is do not touch any floor down below uh, when the work is not completed on the floor above. Before demolishing any wall within 3 meter of the opening in the floor, the opening should be planked or it should be safeguarded with proper bracings and then only the wall has to be demolished. At the completion of each day's work, all walls should be looked for stability and inspection has to be for sure done. Foundation walls which serves as retaining walls to support the earth pressure or adjoining structures should not be demolished until an adjoining structure has been underpinned or braced and then only this wall has to be removed and, uh, uh, and taken off. Catch platforms, sometimes there are a lot of catch platforms in order when especially when you are doing a multi-storied building and these catch platforms are actually outside the structure in order to collect all your debris. So, in demolition of exterior wall, especially in multi-storied structure, it is advisable to provide small, small catch platforms of heavy planking to prevent injuries to the worker working below and to the public when the external walls are more than 20 meters in height. So, these catch platforms shall not be less than one and a half meters in width measured in a horizontal direction from the face of the structure and shall consist of outriggers and planks and the planks shall be laid tight together without any openings between them and also between the walls wherein loose pieces do not try to fall off to the ground level. So, it should be able to catch all the debris. The catch platforms shall be provided with a continuous solid parapet along its outer edge at least 1 meter height so that even the bigger debris are all collected inside the catch platform and not falling off. So, 1 meter height is just like a guardrail protection only. It shall be capable of sustaining a live load of not less than 6100 Newton per meter square and they shall be not used for the storage of material. So, as and when the catch platform has reached sufficient load, it should be removed and started to reuse. So, after the debris are there, it should be transferred through the chutes and the catch platform is again you know, ready for collecting all your debris. Removal of debris and malba. So, there are actually two terms which comes together. Debris is actually the serviceable component and malba is actually a component which has to be trashed or thrown away. So, it as soon as a demolition work uh, keeps going on and after it is complete, the released parts is generally classified into two categories. One is serviceable comp part and the other portion is unserviceable portion. The unserviceable portion is generally also stored and stocked at suitable time intervals for clearing and disposal. In any case, the height of the malba uh, heap shall be limited in order to avoid toppling over or falling on to people who are passing by and so on. And the malba should be stored in the demolition site only and should be removed to a location as required requested by the local civil authority and depends on the space available in the site it has to be stored and stacked. The materials which are likely to cause dust or any undue environment pollution should be removed from the site very quickly and till then they should be covered. So, during transportation also these um, uh, um, these dangerous substances or malba should be again closed and covered while transportation too. Unauthorized use of debris or malba in any work shall not be permitted and even the serviceable, serviceable debris which is used for recycling also should be inspected by a competent person before it is uh, taken for use. Now, how do we classify the debris? 
generally uh, after the debris are uh, taken off there are so many types of debris which comes in which includes um, which includes primarily earth plaster mortar waste bricks blocks concrete glass steel wood or wallpaper tiles slates stones pipes of different uh, sizes and varieties sanitary ware and so on like this you get so many varieties of debris which comes in okay and some may be partially damaged some may be fully damaged also the salvageable materials which can be of some economical value are all removed first which can be reused generally these salvageable materials are removed before even the demolition starts place okay sometimes in induced collapse when the structure has to be brought down in no second then after the induced collapse again the serviceable or usable materials are first relooked at and then they are removed from this from the debris first okay then the remaining debris are accordingly classified into dangerous hardware debris and soft debris okay dangerous debris can be glass nails screws etc which can create a punch hazard or a cut hazard to the workers should be removed first stacked separately or it should be buried in a in a earmarked place and should be kept there nails and screws can be extracted either by hammering in or blunted after removal or if there are loose nails and screws they can be removed using magnets as well the hardware debris shall be reused for road work or filling in some low lying areas and so on and they should be stored and disposed into the local designated areas as advised by the local authorities the soft debris should always be burnt they can be wood chips or some trashes of plaster or something they can be burnt in the site with proper care under the supervision of an irresponsible person or competent person or it should be thrown away into the into the earmarked site for dumping without causing any nuisance to the neighborhood or to the environment sometimes the debris may also have toxic chemicals and other hazardous substances those should be trashed as per the safety act the hand tools required for debris removal spades uh, pick axes hammers chisels are for breaking big pieces pneumatic hammers for crushing hard debris crowbars are generally used for loading of the debris in the particular site mortar pans baskets and wheelbarrows are generally used for dumping the debris in a earmarked site and mechanical vehicles animal carts or dump trucks are generally used for transportation of debris again safe act, safety should be maintained while you are loading and unloading of debris and including transporting the debris handling debris throwing of debris from a certain height are generally avoided from safety point of view carrying of debris on head using a mortar pan or any other substance is through stairs should be avoided as far as possible because it can cause environmental pollution or it can fall and have a slip or a trip hazard the area where debris is likely to fall should be barricaded warning boards and danger signs are displayed until the area is completely cleaned if fine particles exist and you suspect of any dust nuisance water can be sprinkled so that it is not uh, it is not no creating a nuisance or dust pollution throughout if possible the debris shall be filled in used gunny bags uh, for bringing down from from the store from the floors above and also can be stacked in one particular area in the site the glass and steel shall be dumped or buried separately to prevent injuries to workers and uh, the debris should be removed as far as possible uh, into the dumping ground and according to the classification should be moved to the dumping area as already planned by the site engineers the debris as far as possible uh, should be removed in covered wheelbarrows or trucks to prevent nuisance on the roads and also to prevent environment pollution the work of removal of debris should be carried out only during day unless very emergency it can be carried out in the night and again all other extra precautions has to be taken care of when the debris are handled at night the debris should first be removed from the top because uh, if you start removing it can have collapse of the debris causing injuries general safety precautions 
no demolition work should be carried out in the night unless it is an emergency no demolition work should be carried out when there is a rain heavy rain thunderstorms and so on a warning device shall be installed in the area to be uh, to be demolished to warn the workers in case of any danger goggles preferably of celluloid lens should be worn by the workers during demolition because there can be falling debris or flying debris which can please us small dirt dust etc which can be blown away through the wind and which can cause injuries to the eyes in the same way it is desirable to wear a rubber or a leather gloves uh, because when demolishing rcc work or removing steel work your hands are safe and not likely to get injured screens should be placed where necessary to prevent flying pieces or falling pieces from injuring the fellow workmen water may be used to reduce a dust and uh, while tearing down plaster from the brickwork if this is not practical practically possible the workers are supposed to or advised to wear proper face mask and respiratory masks no unnecessary work shall go on below the floor when the demolition is in progress above the particular floor fall protection to the workers should be maintained uh, to prevent falling from the structure first aid equipment should be kept available in the demolition site uh, as per the bocw act which we will see which you have seen earlier appropriate uh, portable first aid appliances fire appliances also should be available in case of any fire breaking out all emergency exits should be properly marked in case of an emergency and workers should know how to be evacuated preparedness for demolition again a recap methods to be used to bring the structure down has to be thoroughly studied it's based on the structure to be demolished and the adjacent structures equipment necessary to do the job has to be thoroughly planned manpower requirements always try to do the demolition work with the minimal skilled labors okay then safety report fire prevention and evacuation plan has to be there emergency first aid security services has to be there assessment of health hazards in terms of toxic chemicals or even if it is concrete structure the dust coming out of cement breaking and so on has to be thoroughly analyzed pp has to be recommended to the workers and the mandatory pp has to be warned and training requirements has to be given to the workers in order to do the demolition engineering survey uh, report should be talking about the building characteristics okay the damage level which has been happened in the building and the strength of the building the retained building hazardous substances present inside the building and when demolition has to happen protection of adjacent structures whether underpinning has to be done on to the remaining structures when you are actually demolishing the particular um, uh, structure and even the choice of uh, uh, the equipment used for demolition is also based on the location and type of your adjacent structures methods for demolition methods to protect the public protection of overhead and underground utilities like for example electric lines water gas etc everything has to be taken care of and whether it is locating the utilities or securing the utilities or relocating the utility utilities has to be taken care of in your engineering survey analysis if you want to use uh, uh, blasting uh, okay for collapsing a structure then all blasting requirements has to go as per the is code and osha requirements so this complete lecture was taken from these references uh, sub part d t on demolition then uh, is code is 14130 on demolition of buildings code of safety is 13416 on disposal of debris primarily the part 3 and also few references and books and uh, the blasting is as per uh, two uh, uh, notes one is on osha sub part u talks about blasting and use of explosives and is 4081 also talks about safety code for blasting and related drilling operations if you want to use blasting as a method for induced collapse then you can go through these additional references thank you